Hi guys and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again. We're down in the garden today and it is beautiful. Okay, so we're just doing a really quick update today. We have like a motivational block. So I just figured I would bring you fine folks of YouTube down here into my garden with me. And we'll breathe it in together. We'll do kind of like a third garden tour, I suppose. So we have a lot actually getting ready to harvest, which is so much fun when you get to come down here and basically pick your lunch. So my daughter's been down here a lot with me. We actually were out um, picking strawberries earlier today. So you guys can check that out. Okay guys, Josie and I are down here picking strawberries. Snake. They're, yeah, snake. <laughs> Always be careful when you're harvesting, especially like we live up against this tree line. I have a ton of raccoons, but I literally just brushed my hand across this guy and luckily he seems pretty friendly. What's even scarier is how quickly you brush your hand past it, wrench back, and go back to look at it again, and it's gone. Um, I'm totally cool with most pests, and I won't even call it a pest, with most visitors in my garden, as long as they're beneficial. And he's beneficial. He'll eat bugs, small rodents, um, the usual stuff that would come and eat my garden. So I can't really be upset with him. However, He's in our strawberry patch and our strawberries are coming in. So um, I really want my strawberries. He, uh, I don't know, I don't think snakes eat strawberries, but he's not the only snake that I've seen in my strawberry patches. So it's just gonna be one of those things where, yeah. Which I'm sure he's got holes in here that he travels in and out of. But boy, Lord have mercy, does that not just give me the heebie-jeebies that I'm reaching in here and Found him, jerked back, got the camera out, gone. <laughs> gone. So, I don't know, guys. And I kind of want to find him. I kind of am, like, intrigued to play hide-and-seek with the snake in the garden. I think he's going to win, though. Next up, y'all, we got our Alaskan peas. And... Joe's been hitting these kind of hard, and so have I, because I really like coming out here and just snapping them and eating them. So you guys can see, we've got nice cylindrical peas. And you guys know, if you've seen any of my other videos, that I was worried I was getting in on the late part. And maybe a little bit I am, but we are reaping some of those benefits. And you guys can see, my peas got a little out of control, so I just grabbed this old cattle panel, and I didn't nail it down or secure it. I just kind of put it inside one part of this um, grow box and then it's just braced up against that. So let's see what piece we got. They're pretty good. It's always nice to come down in the summertime and be able to just snack out of your own garden. There's no other feeling like it. If you didn't even want to grow a garden, you'll change your mind the first time you get to come down here and eat right out of your garden. So you guys can see my lettuce is doing great and my arugula. Guys, my arugula. It bolted and I tried cutting it down to see if I could fluff the greens. No luck. So we have beautiful arugula flowers now that I figured they're beautiful so I'll just leave them. It's beautiful. Not everything has to serve a purpose. It's just beautiful. These I'm not so proud of but I'm still working on locating neem oil. I have diatomaceous earth and I'm really getting tempted to use it but my bees guys I want to keep my pollinators alive. I don't want to hurt them. I can see some of our jalapeno plants. Look at that fella. Starting to get some blooms on him, so hopefully we'll have 
some peppers soon. So it's kind of, I kind of like how we're growing things in here. We've got um, small volunteers. We've got things we started inside. And then I have like one or two store-bought ones just because I like to support local um, farmer's markets. So we've got that going. The corn's doing great. My bell peppers are starting to come alive a little bit, but oh, my cauliflower too, guys. Some things eating my cauliflower too. It's hard to share my garden with bugs, but hey, they, they have as much right to be here as I do. So, and just an update on our mulch experiment. There's the regular mulch in between my sunflowers, and you can see I have straw behind my corn. My dog is barking at a buzzard. Um, so, eh, I want to say the straw's not going to do as well as the mulch. I feel like I'm going to have to give a reapplication because you guys can tell, especially like down this one, the weeds are just slowly encroaching in towards the middle. So it was a nice try. Um, and where I had my red corn back here, guys, I actually did go ahead and replant and I do have some. They're starting to come up in these rows. So that's always good. I was really worried. I'm still a little bit worried that I won't reap what I sow there, but it is what it is. And if I do, that's great. If I don't, then my animals will get a nice little treat. My chickens will get it. The goats will get it. Llama will get it. If we have more animals by then, they'll get it too. You never know when you're on a homestead. So I think I'm going to stick with the mulch or next year I'll just have a vision but I won't be as spontaneous with my vision and I'll actually make it to where I can get in here to actually till. Um, and hopefully my dogs will leave it alone. I'm getting ready to take my fence down because I found rabbits in here this morning and as much as I would love to have fresh rabbit next to my lettuce and strawberries and everything else, I I don't know. We're still out on, we're still, the jury's still out on the rabbits if we're gonna be eating rabbits. And we have barn swallows up here. Oh man, look at that. So I'm out here and this is my front garden bed. It's right in front of my house. And the uh, one swallow fell right here. happy-go-lucky plant that I usually pull because they spread like wildfire everywhere. So I usually pull these guys out and I don't really ever get to see them bloom but there's just something about this guy. And this rock wall, there's like there's like nothing there guys, nothing. You would think that it's landed in a place where it couldn't live and thrive and produce beauty and uh, here it is, look. There's like nowhere for it to it's found like the most minute crack in this retaining wall and has just overcome. And it's got a good place because my weeping cherry creates enough sun to where these blocks don't get as hot in the summer. So it's not going to bake it, but it's just, that is so amazing. And I guess that just goes to show like for our circumstances. And I know it's, it's probably going to be really weird. I guess maybe this will be a devotional, but Plants like this just give me a whole lot of hope because there are a lot of times in our lives where we just feel like we've landed in a place where we can't thrive, that nothing good could possibly come out of where we are at that current moment in our life. And God just has kind of a way of turning that around on us and letting us realize that it is what we make out of it. It might seem like a bad situation. It might seem barren. It might seem hopeless, but we have the faith the side of a mustard seed then we can move mountains we can make a home beautiful out of the most unsuspecting place that doesn't seem very hospitable at all and I'm just really thankful for that today because I'm not anywhere in a point in my life where I feel like I'm in a bad situation where I can't see the good in it I am actually in a place in my life where I feel super blessed like blessed beyond measure where 
I've been in situations that I didn't think I was going to be able to recover from. That I was going to lose my identity as a person. And God is so faithful. He's just so faithful. I can sit out here and I can hear Bob White. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's just really cool. Look, that should give you hope. If you've got no hope, that should give you hope. All right, guys, I know that's a really short one for me. You know, a little long-winded, I like to talk. But I just wanted to take you guys through um, my garden and look at the sign I made. I made it out of an old silver platter and just some paint. I know it's probably transposed, so I'll probably flip this, but it says, life's a garden, dig it. And I did all that, look at that. We've got a lot of things coming up around the farm. I have a lot of things I wanna to do to kind of beautify this old shed before it's gone. I have a feeling it's not gonna last me much longer. Um, it'll get through raising those barn swallows this year and probably storing some things next year. And I'm assuming that'll probably be the last we see of that old blue shed back there. We've got some things coming up with our chicken coop. We've got um, chicken tractor videos getting ready to come out because our Cornish crosses guys, our sea monsters, are getting big enough where it's time for them to move out and to fertilize my grass. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and water. It looks overcast guys, but we've been in a bit of a drought. <laughs> we got rain hot, rain hot. And now we're just kind of in that season where it's just getting hot and we're not getting rain. So I'm going to go ahead and water my garden guys. I hope you enjoyed being with me today. I know it's a short one again, but I just wanted to bring you guys out here and share the garden with you and to share that little wonderful flower in the side of my retaining wall that just gives me hope. And I hope just showing it to somebody out there gives them hope. So I'm gonna go ahead and water my garden, guys. Until next time, thanks for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you pulled some hope. <laughs> hope you pulled some hope from that little flower in the side of the rock garden. And remember, just like we water our gardens, sometimes we need to water our souls. Sometimes we need to just water our own happiness and our own joy. And if that's the garden, if that's homesteading, if that's just being out with your family, guys, do what you need to do. Stay happy and healthy out there. Spread some love and kindness. And until next time, thanks for being here with me on Mulberry Branch Farm. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.